So this is 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. This is the God of the universe. This is the Lord Jesus Christ from the very beginning. The Holy Spirit hovered over the waters in creation. The Word was there in the beginning. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Because the Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Word. He is the living Word. He is the incredible representation of the Father. Jesus said, if you want to see the Father, look at me. I and the Father are one. These are the things that we have to remember. And he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. We've seen the manifestation of God through Jesus Christ, <coughs> which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled. You know, they hugged. They held hands. They ate together. They've cuddled one another, embraced one another. They've handled the Lord Jesus Christ. He came in the flesh. And he truly was flesh. And he was the word of life. Everything that came out of the Lord Jesus Christ's mouth was the word of life. He was the manifestation and representative of the Father. What he said, he only said what the Father told him to say. So whatever he gives us, whatever he spoke to us, that's why a lot of Bibles have got red letter Bibles, because these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says here, the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. So he's actually calling Jesus the eternal life. Did you catch that? And declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. So Jesus is, was and is the eternal life. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. So if we have a problem with Jesus, we have a problem with eternal life. We have a problem with the Word of God. Jesus wasn't just a teacher or a prophet. He was the manifest Word of God. Word of life. Eternal, he was the eternal life in God, manifested in the flesh. And he could have lived forever. But he chose to die for you and I. It says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean today? What does it mean when we say, and we declare this to you, we have seen and heard that has been manifested to us, so that we may have fellowship with you? Well, we can be friends with you outside of Christ, because Christ was a friend of sinners. But there is something we can't do with you outside of Christ. We can't have true fellowship with you outside of Christ. 
We can't be one with you. Look at it, what it says here. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. You see, our fellowship, our oneness, our, our one body, our one church, our one baptism, is through our fellowship in the Father and his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we fellowship. So we should be friendly. We should be open and welcoming to people. We should be loving and kind to people. But the word says we should be especially kind and loving towards the family of God, the household of God, the church, your brothers and sisters. You come into a new family. You don't choose your family. You're born into them. But when you come into Christ's family, it's the same. You are born again into a new family. And you don't choose your brothers and sisters. And sometimes some of your brothers and sisters may not be that attractive. <laughs> and they may be very hard and hard work. And maybe you're a bit hard work. And welcome to the club. And welcome to the new family. Um, and we will give you reciprocity. We will love you and you will love us. And we will work together to find a way forward so that we can rub against each other and rub along nicely like a load of porcupines jumping in a tank together. And, you know, we will find ways of being able to not stab each other with our porcupine tips. <laughs> and we will learn to love one another because we are family. And that's where the fellowship comes in. That's where the, the commitment comes in. You can't suddenly join a body and become an arm in a body and then decide, oh, well, I don't like this body, I'm going to go to another body. And so somebody else, another body, has got two arms, and that don't look right. Two arms on one side and one on the other it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? You, you actually were made to be in this one, you know? <laughs> and so God joins you through you being born again, you are born into a, a new spiritual family. And it doesn't matter what your denomination was. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what culture you're in. It doesn't matter where you live. Where you are born again, that is your spiritual family. That's where God has placed you. You need to blossom where you're planted. You need to make sure you're following God's direction plan for your life. Otherwise, it's going to go drastically wrong for you. It's not going to be right for you if you get out of God's plan and purpose. You need to be available to God. You need to be open to God. God's leading, not yours. It's no longer when you come into fellowship with God, with, when you have a new father and a new brother in the Lord Jesus Christ. You become joint heirs with Christ. Suddenly you come into a new family and you are no longer your own. You have been bought at a price. Christ has shed his blood for you to bring you into a family and you need to blossom where you're planted. You need to be a part of that family that God has given you. Of course we're all part of that wider family of God. We know that. Of course we are. When I was saved, before I was saved, I went to the church and they were all talking gibberish as far as I was concerned. They were all saying the Lord this and the Lord that. I thought, well, these are a funny lot there. But I wasn't saved then. I wasn't, I wasn't a believer. I didn't understand. People were talking about all sorts of strange things that I'd never heard before. It was like a new language I had to learn. And at that point, I didn't really want to learn any new language. I just thought they're all weirdos and I want to get out. But I didn't feel comfortable in the world. And I didn't feel comfortable in the church. I was in no man's land for a while. And it was only through the Lord touching me, changing my heart, drawing me into that family and into a new relationship with him and with people that I didn't know. It was like I was suddenly, as a baby, brought in kicking and screaming and what the heck's going on here? Into this new family, looking around for faces that I might recognise, not having a clue who they were, 